what kind of seeds are you planting? What kind of seeds are you planting? And today we want to deal with the seed of righteousness. If you have your Bibles, if you turn to Hosea, the 10th chapter, and I'll give you a minute if you have your Bible. I know you don't normally turn to Hosea, especially not the 10th chapter. So I'll give you a minute. If you have your electronic device, you can just punch it right on in there. It's good to go. I'm going to read the 12th and the 13th verse of Hosea, the 10th chapter. Hosea, the 10th chapter. What kind of seeds are you sowing? Last week we talked about the seed of peace. And today, the seed of righteousness. Hosea, the 10th chapter, reading the 12th and the 13th verse, it reads, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. I read Hosea the 10th chapter, the 12th and the 13th verse. What kind of seeds are you planting? Are they seeds of righteousness? Oh, God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time, oh, God. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. I ask right now, God, that you hide your unfit servant behind the cross. That it be all of thee and none of me. Breathe on us that we will not just be hearers of your word, but be doers of it that will go out into a lost and dying world and tell them that Jesus lives. God, I thank you for what you're about to do, oh God. And Lord, if there's one under the sound of my voice, outside or in the building, if there's one that don't know you, that has not made that decision to make Jesus their choice, that this will be the moment and the time that they make the greatest decision that they'll ever make in their life, they'll make Jesus their choice. Oh, God, I ask you, have your way, oh, God. Have your way. And we're going to be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you have done, for what you're doing right now. And, yes, we still have great expectation for the future. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Here we find in the book of Hosea, we are very familiar with the first three chapters of it as it opens up with the storyline of Hosea and Gomar, a woman that basically sells herself and Hosea goes and gets her again. The analogy then is also in the parallels between the Lord God and his people Israel. And so we're very familiar with the first three chapters of the book of Hosea. But chapters 4 through 14 is really a sermon that Hosea continues to preach to the people of Israel that they need to turn from their wicked ways and seek God. And here we find in chapter 10, we, if, you let, if you let me for just a moment go through verse 13 and then back up to 12. Yeah, we see here we have the breakdown of relationships and corruption of all values. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Again, injustice and treachery. He's labeling and telling it. It sounds like something we may be experiencing today in our very own society. Then when you in the multitude of thy mighty men, he's talking about how you have put your trust in chariots and horses. You've put your trust in your military power. 
and you have not put your trust in me. He we find here in the text as he deals with 13 and tells them about themselves. But before that, in verse 12, he says, So to yourselves in righteousness. Righteousness, acting in accord with divine or moral law, doing God's will. We know in James 2, 26, faith without works is dead. We know James 1, 22, but be ye doers of the word. So we understand that we don't supposed to just speak Jesus or come to Sunday morning worship and sing for an hour or two. But uh, the desire is that we live Christ 24-7 every day of our life. Ooh. Seeds of righteousness. Understanding that we're supposed to be building relationships instead of breaking them down. That we should have values and substance. That we should care about injustice, not just in America, but all over the world. We got to deal with it. Are we sowing seeds of righteousness? Are we doing God's will? Or is this Bible just a history book to you? That you read it and you, you, you love the stories, but you never apply the application to your life. There's a problem in the church where you just come and you just read it, but nothing comes from it. That's why we sow. That's why we give. So that somebody else can be blessed outside of these four walls. Somebody else can have an opportunity to experience the love of Christ. And through our testimony, they'll see Jesus and cry out, what must I do to be saved? Are we sowing seeds of righteousness? The work must be done. So sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. And that's not, that's desiring mercy for everyone. Not looking for reward for what you do. Ooh. For God blesses a what kind of giver? Cheerful one. God blesses a cheerful, somebody who gives from their heart, just like the widow might. All those men before her gave silver and gold. But she gave from her heart, gave everything she had. Not looking for the reward, earthly. But laying up treasure in heaven. So it's mercy. Understanding who you are. Understanding that you first must receive this mercy as well. In Christ. That Christ forgave you of all your sin. And have blessed you with something to give to somebody else. The blessing is not just for you. But it's also for somebody else. We must understand something when we talk about this righteousness, this principle of doing the work. Doing the work. Showing folks. Because sometimes the only Jesus people will see is the Jesus in you. And your life is supposed to be representative of the one who gave you life. The one who gave his life on God, God, the zeal for all humanity. That's what they should see in your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's hard to see so many folks, and let me call them church folk, come out of the church on Sunday morning. Worse than they were when they went in it. Attitude has not changed. Go back to their homes, it caused the same chaos. Cutting folks off on the road, cussing folk out, go out to eat and treat folks bad. All of these things are not seeds of righteousness. God has called us. No, we're not perfect. 
We go through a process of sanctification, and yes, we should be getting better every day. More and more, we should look like Christ each and every day. So I ain't talking about perfection. Some of you are like, you know, I ain't perfect. I ain't asking you to be perfect. God ain't asking you to be perfect. He has asking you to live and love like he loved. Here Hosea is laying out his heart and he's pleading with the people, turn, turn back to Jesus. Break up your follow ground. They had become so hard hearted. They did no longer could feel. And no longer the word of God could penetrate their heart and their life. I tell y'all a story all the time. I, I remember several years ago, pre-pandemic, as the moderator of the Chick Hominy Baptist Association, I had visited, I don't know how many churches. I visited so many churches during the revival season. I said I was going to get to them all. Halfway through, the preacher would preach, and all I heard Wah, 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 wah. I'm just being, I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. I'm sitting there, I'm trying to get it, but it, it, I heard so much. I was full. And I couldn't hear no more. How many of you sit in church Sunday after Sunday? Listen to sermon after sermon and never apply a word of the sermon to your everyday life. So basically all you're doing is listening for cute words and phrases instead of listening for the substance that can change your life and your family's destiny. Because this is a living word. And once it's applied to your life, then it becomes a beacon light to all of those around you that they will see Jesus. See, it's funny, even, even here at our beloved Brown Grove, I ain't talking about nobody. So don't even, so if it's you and you've done this in the past, I love you. But after the sermon, I, I'll go out there and I'll stand and I'll greet folks. They rarely mention the sermon. But they'll mention that I messed up on a name. They'll remember a story I told. But rarely do they say I, 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 I hear, heard that word and I'm ready to apply it to my life. I'm not saying none. I, 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 you, you have folks that, you know, they, they, they pick up on things they want to hear. We ain't got no folk like that in here. Don't raise your hand. Don't, 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 don't raise your hand. Because I do it at home with myself. My wife tells me something I don't want to hear. I ain't here. I don't, what do you say? Do it on purpose sometimes. No, I ain't hear that. What do you say? Say that again. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I just gave our secret away. My bad. <laughs> but the reality is, your ears have been cut off. It's fallow ground. It's not penetrating like it should. Because you're not ready to put that into example and live that life. For Jesus Christ. Are you sowing seeds of righteousness? For it is time. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Now is the time. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Not when I get myself together. Which is a lie. Because you can't get yourself together. You've been trying all these years. Because you can't do it. First, you must trust in him and say, Lord, I give you my life. Make me change my thinking, change my thought process. Change my mind in a renewing of our mind. Romans 12 and 2. So we want to renew our mind, renew our thinking. 
as we put our trust in him. And God says that he is able. He's able to heal the land. He's able to bless them. He'll turn. He'll turn his wrath from the people. And he will bless them. He will forgive them just like he forgave you. Because my Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody sits in here that is righteous from pulpit to pew. All have sinned. That's why we need a Savior. His name is Jesus. So we got to recognize what's happening here. Are we sowing seeds of righteousness? I want you to just check yourself. Are you speaking blessings? Or is cursings coming out of your mouth? Are you speaking joy and peace and living it? Or are you calling for destruction? You're tearing down instead of building up. You've gotten to the point where you're so fallow that nothing good can penetrate you. You hear good news and you, you, you let that pass on by, but, but you remember and retain everything that is evil and not good. It's a renewing of your mind. Our society is plagued with it. Our news is overwhelmed by it because they know that it catches your attention and keeps you. And put you in a state where you turn on your brother man. I was told a story yesterday, and I'm almost done, y'all. Before I close, I told a story this day. I was at a conference. A young man, Imago Day, God and man, God's relationship with man. And he told the story of how he visited Africa. A former boss, Dr. Strayhorn, told this story. And he visited Africa for the first time. And he had heard of Mago Day many times. I mean, he's a, theolog he's a theologian. So he had heard of the term. It's an African term. And he heard of it. But this African began to tell him about what it really means. Shared with him, he said, you know, there was a scientist that grabbed up around 10 or so Caucasian American children. Then he gathered up around 10 American, African American children. And then gathered together 10 African children. grabbed a huge bucket of candy. So they were in the ages of seven, eight years old. Big old bucket of candy. And he said, whoever gets to this candy first can have it all. He calls on the Caucasian children, and they begin to run towards it, kicking people, knocking people down to get to it. To grab that candy. And when the person that got there first said, hey, hey, look at me, I got all the candy. Then he called on the uh, African-American Americans. Same children, same age group. And he took off running the same way. Knocking each other down, and the one that one said, Yes, I got it. You little girl won and said, Yes, I got the candy. I'm a track star. I'm, I'm a track star. See how much our culture has changed us. How we've adopted a culture that is evil. And then he called on the African children, and they locked arms. And they walk together to the candy. And said, since we all got here, then all 
all the candy goes to all of us. A changing and the renewing of our mind. Righteousness. That destroys the selfishness that we have been taught. I got mine, you get. Well, y'all heard that before. But we really practice what God is calling us to practice. His word. And truly love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We go together. And when one is in need... We all are in need, and we want to be a blessing to somebody else. We want to sow seeds of righteousness. Seeds of righteousness. Because there's no doubt. If we're going to call ourselves Christians and that's to be Christ-like, you can't tell me heading into Jerusalem, knowing what was before him, Knowing that he was going to be beaten beyond recognition. Knowing that he would be nailed to that cross. Knowing that he would be gasping for air. My Savior still. He went forward. Continuing to go. Being betrayed by those that loved him. He kept on going. Because guess what? He loved us that much. To give of his life. So that we might have right to the tree of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And following his example, then God has called you to give of your best. As God gave of his best so that you can bless somebody else. So seeds. So seeds of righteousness. Of love, peace, so seeds, so we can be planted. And God says He'll get the increase. He provides the sun. He provides the rain. He provides the things that are in the soil for it to grow. And once He touches it, y'all. Just like a little boy's lunch, what little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hands. Come on and give God some praise. We want to sow seeds of righteousness. As you stand to your feet. God's calling us individually and collectively. I want to make this clear. All right, I'm closing. But when you talk negatively about your church, you're talking negatively about yourself. Because <laughs> the church is not... brick and mortar. They ain't the church. You stand here. Those that sit outside, you are the church. God lives, his spirit lives in you. So what are you sowing? What are you passionate about? What has God led upon your heart to do? And some of y'all have, have stepped into a call. And we all are called to do something. There's no one that's been called just to sit in the pew. There's a purpose for you. Whether it's just praying for somebody. And that's a mighty thing. Uplifting somebody. It's a mighty thing. God's calling you. What will you answer? 
Stop sowing seeds of negativity. Stop sowing seeds of destruction and corruption, breaking up relationships of injustice. Putting your trust in things that you should not put your trust in. What will you sow? The fruit of the spirit. Joy, peace, love, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. When will you sow those seeds so that God, not you, can get the glory? You're not too old. And to my babies, you're not too young. Now is the time. Now is the tomorrow's not promised to any of us. Now is the time. The field is ready. Are you ready to sow the seeds so that it will be fruitful and grow? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my sermon today has been for the believer to encourage and to challenge. Yes, God's word is to challenge you. You know, so we, 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 we want to shout too much sometimes. Sometimes we need to be challenged. But there may be one here. And I will never take it for granted. And I don't care how long you've been coming to this church or any other church. If you have not made a personal decision to make Jesus your choice, this is your moment. This is your time. Right now, right now, I'm pleading with you. Because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. There's so many cases where folks were sitting on their porch or just driving in their car, going about their way, and their life was taken for whatever reason. So there's no guarantee that you will make it back here for Resurrection Sunday. Now is the time to make that decision. There's two things that you must do. First, you must recognize your condition, that you're a sinner. You must recognize that you need a Savior. His name is Jesus. He came to this earth, put it on flesh, lived approximately around 33 years, and then gave his life for all humanity. So first, you must recognize you need him. He is the substitute. He took your place. So that's first. If you ask him to forgive your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will do it if you ask. Secondly, you must believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You must believe it. Not with the head knowledge. Well, this sounds good because I'm going to get to heaven. That's all I want. If I can just get through them pearly gates, I'll be all right. It's head knowledge. I'm talking about a heart. And I'm not talking about the blood pump, so don't get it mixed up. I'm talking about the inner man that provokes you to change and gives you a desire to live for Christ forevermore. If you believe his death, his burial, and yes, his resurrection. If you truly believe, my God says he'll come in. He'll be with you forevermore. Now, I'm not promising you rose petals because most of us have stories in our lives right now. Things that we're going through. That are tough. That's life itself. That's trials and tribulations that you will face. But I promise you and God promises us in his word that you will not go through those things alone. He says that he will be with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> He'll carry you through. Get you to the other side. Friend, now is that time. If you have not made that decision, this is your moment. 
This is your moment. He's knocking at your heart door. Will you let the Savior in? Is there one? This is your moment. I'm pleading with you. I would love to introduce to you my best friend. His name, his name, his name is Jesus. Is there one? It's your moment. It's your time. If you're outside, if you just roll down that window, raise your hand, we'll be out in just a moment to share with you Jesus Christ. Just raise your hand and be acknowledged. This is your moment. Hallelujah. I pray that all are saved. My God, my God. Everybody knows Jesus for themselves. Hallelujah. 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 Now go. Sow seeds of righteousness. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, God, for what you have done. Allow that word to penetrate our heart and our life. That we will not be hearers, but be doers of your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen.